All right, hopefully everybody has your test review out because that's what I'm going to go over right now. Like I said, hopefully we can do this and get done by 1030. And I'll show you the thing that I just brought up on screen just a second ago. And some of you heard it, but I'll show you that in just a minute. So question one is, what is the window object? Remember, it's the window object contains all those other objects that we talked about. We looked a little bit at history, at nav, at screen, at location. We looked at those a little bit, but we spent the majority of the chapter on the document object. All right. So again, the window object, as it says, it's the top level object. If that still confuses you, I don't think it does, but if it does for some reason still confuse you, then please look at the picture that we went over quickly at the beginning of the chapter, which is on page 292 of the book. I don't think I have the book up anymore. I think I closed it. Yes, I did. No, I didn't. 292. There was that picture. So there's the window object. It's the top level. All right. Okay, question number two. What is the bomb? We already talked about this. Really, that picture I showed you was the bomb, and the window object is just part of the bomb. Again, remember, at the end of each chapter is a summary where they give definitions. These are all in there. It was on like page 349 or something like that. It's on 349, 350, 351 are all the definitions in the chapter. And one of the questions that's on the test basically asks something about this. I don't remember what it was, bless you, I don't remember what it was phrased like, but remember, the bomb always looks the same. In other words, the hierarchy there that, that you saw on, that, on, that, on this page right here, that doesn't change. What's in there can change, <clears throat> but again, it's kind of like you're driving down a road and all the houses have the same address. The occupants may change over the years, but the houses are all on the same street and have the same address. Same kind of thing right here. All right. What's the get elements by selector method? Again, the key thing to remember is it returns an array of element, that should be element objects, from the document that match that selector.
Everybody have that one? What does the append child method do? It adds a node to the last child element of the parent. So it places that element at the end by default. It appends it to the end. How do you customize the appearance of a new browser window? You use the option argument of window.open. What does the focus method do? It makes the window the active window. Active is the key word there. Number seven, unfortunately, is kind of long. So I'll just leave that up there for a couple minutes. I'll move it up because I know it gets a little blurry down there, but I'll give you a couple minutes to key in the, the set and clear timeouts, and then we'll move it up for the interval ones.
was wondering when Shannon walked by before if she was going to tell me about this, what's going on with all this stuff, but. This is what we had at the end of the chapter. So again, what does the history object do? What does the location object do? And what does the navigator object do?
next, <clears throat> the command to return all H2 elements, get elements by tag name, and please remember this can be either single quotes or double quotes there, it doesn't matter, but the idea is it's get elements by tag name, and is asked before, I remember which of you asked this, but I mean, I think it was Ethan that this is case sensitive. goes back to what we talked about before. Remember, <clears throat> not font dash family. That's why you need to have the camel casing that's in there. I mentioned that to you before, why you'd want to do it this way and why you wouldn't want to do it that way. <clears throat> I think that's one of those where it's a multiple choice one. And one of the ones that's in there is like font family like that, and one is font minus family. Don't do the one with a minus. Number 11, another one of these with a couple things in there. Everybody have that one? Here's an easy one. The DOM hierarchy is also known as the DOM tree. Number 13, the object that represents the window browser window is the window object.
<clears throat> Number 14, what's that self property? It's a way of referring to the window object. So to say self dot something is the same thing as saying window dot something. Number 15, each DOM tree item is also known as a node, N-O-D-E. <clears throat> and the last one will take a bit because that's the definitions, so I'll leave those up there I'll leave you know so I'll let you do these first half then I'll move the rest up so Does everybody have these first three? Everybody have those first three? And I'll move that up. So that's the rest.
Okay, I'm going to lift it up just a little more. Hopefully everybody can read all those up. <clears throat> Does everybody have all of it? Any? No. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Sure it can. Oops. Just number three. Whoop. Try that again. Any other ones? <clears throat> All right, one last thing I want to do with you quick. Uh, Tiffany had asked the question about the um, portfolio, and I'm looking at it here. I will rewrite that this weekend, and when you come in on Monday, you'll have one. But this is what I want to show you. I'm going to make this bigger. We only have, whether you realize it or not, like there's like four weeks left. And that includes next week, which is only three days. So what I want to show you quick is what we got next week is for the November, we got the 21st, the 22nd, whoops, 23rd. And then the next week we've got the 28th, the 29th, the 30th, the 1st, and the second. All right. You'll see what I'm doing hopefully in just a second. And we're into December, so third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth, fifteenth. I think I'm off by a day. Yeah, I am. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's the twelfth. That's the 12th, the 13th, the 14th, the 15th, <clears throat> the 16th. It's pretty darn close. How's that? And it's, like I said, then this is not there. Then the last, when we meet at the end, the, it's just that Monday. That's December 19th. All right, so why am I even wasting your time showing you that? Well, what I want you to understand is this whole week, that week of the 12th, and that Monday, I'm just going to put this here, portfolio. I want you to have plenty of time to work on that. I want it to look professional. I want you to be proud of it. I want the students who are in St. Louis to look at yours and say, man, I wish I could do that. Seriously, I do. All right? Which means that we only have three weeks, and we've got still to get done with chapters 6, 7, and 8. All right? Now, what I'm planning on doing on Monday is we're going to go through, I don't know, uh, some DOM examples. I'll put it that way, okay? Then what I'd like to do Tuesday is both 
the written test for chapter five, and then also lecture on chapter six. All right? And then here we would go through some form examples. What that means is by the time we break, we'll have gone through the first six chapters. Okay? Well, I've already promised you this. This has got to be a lab day because, you know, when people come back from holidays, you, you, your mind is still sort of on the holiday. You know, it, and it's natural type of thing. So what I'm thinking here would be the written test for chapter 6. And then that Wednesday, the 30th, would be the hands-on for chapters 5 and 6, which would mean that th here on this day we would go through chapter 7 and here we would go, well we'd also, we do the that and the test review, so even here too. So we go chapter 6 and then test review and here we go through chapter 7 and we'd also do the test review. All right, and then here we go through some OOP examples. OOP is object-oriented programming. All right, now you can see what that puts us up against. All right, so what, I'm, what I'd like to do here then, because that, that means that we're throwing everything into this week here. So this would be the written test for Chapter 7. And then this would be the lecture for Chapter 8. Yeah, we can do that too. All right, here, chapter eight, we go through some array slash string examples. All right, but then I would put this off until probably Thursday. And so this would be the um, hands on for chapters seven and eight and that would make that also a portfolio day and that would be a lab day i'm trying to space it out so you know we don't have too much day too many days with it which is where i inundate you with lecture and stuff but i don't know any other way to do this all right and i've talked to evan he does he wants to make sure we get through chapter eight all right again if you are interested there are lectures out there on YouTube for all these chapters on the on the uh, PowerPoints including 9 10 11 and 12 all right so unless anybody has a problem with what I've written up here that's that's the way that I plan to do it then for the rest of the semester and again down I can see down there 19 that's so that's the last day I can even put it here and we'll put this so that's the last day. And what I'm supposed to do is I'm also supposed to meet with you on that day and just let you know basically how you're doing, et cetera. All right. And I know some of you have been going through your, your own situations. Everybody's different. I get that. And some of you, it's been very hard to get homework done, et cetera. All right. I will, I will always take homework, and I will give you some credit for it. All right, there's still two or three people in this room that have not done the hands-on project or turn them in for chapter four. Turn them in as quickly as you can. All right. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, you can use that at least as a starting point. But like I said, th this is this is the way I'm going to grade this. Would be if I brought somebody in here who could potentially hire each and every one of you. And that's what they're looking at. They're saying, well, I know you've only had a semester at, yeah, but this is what we've done. So we're trying to blow you away aesthetically with the way this looks. We want, it, we want to show you the HTML stuff we learned, the CSS stuff we learned, and we also want links in there to our JavaScript stuff. All right? And that's what you're going to see. And probably 10 points worth of that of, of your assignment. I think it's worth 100 points. I was looking at it on here. And 10 points of it will be getting it up and running on Rankin. Now, I know at least, I think, Evan in here, we had problems connecting with you. I'm hoping that that's all going to be fixed. 
I mean, if you if you follow everything and you can't connect, I can, I'm sure not going to take off because of that. That's something beyond your control. All right, but if you don't make an attempt to do it, that's different. So any questions on this? Like I said, this may not be the, the, the best uh, way to do this. I'm not even saying it's the only way to do this, but let's see if I can come over here. Sure. No, it's just going to be one in bootstrap. If there's going to be X number of points, and I don't know what X is, but there will be X number of points that um, are going to be the, the part of it that is for the uh, putting it in bootstrap. It's going to be at least a letter grade. So it'll be at least 10 points, and it might be up to 20. So if, let's say you, you just can't get it to work in bootstrap, but you've got it looking really nice HTML. Well, then you know you're going to lose those points. And again, I'm not, I'm not even going to ask. I'm going to say, is that fair? Well, maybe it's not, but that's just the way that it's going to be. giving you each a copy of this. And it's up to you to hold me to it. 